Uh, hi, my name is Joanne. So I'm the CTO and co-founder of Mitis. Uh, so I hope you all had a chance to uh, check out the presentation delivered by our CEO, Elena. Uh, Mitis aims to provide infrastructure for the Web3 economy. Uh, what my team and myself focus on, of course, is the technology part of it. Uh, currently, we are busy with uh, launch of the public testing net. Uh, thanks for having me and looking forward to the discussion today. Uh, so again, I'm going to focus on the opt optimistic rollout, which I'm more familiar with. Uh, so I, I think uh, uh, Lori, uh, if I pronounce correctly, sorry if I put your name, um, uh, is right. So a lot of cost is associated with the, the requirements of uh, submitting the data to the MENA. And that data availability is very important for Optimus to roll out because uh, the verifiers need those data to verify whether uh, there is some uh, uh, fraudulent behaviors and, and initiate a challenge process. Uh, so that is almost a fixed cost. Uh, so, but I just want to first say one thing, uh, no matter what, the cost is still significantly less than I mean that. So the, the value is definitely there. Even 10 times, it, it's not a, a small feat, right? Uh, if you have a uh, hundred transactions, it's a lot of money that you saved on layer two. Uh, so that's the first point I have. Uh, but if you look back, uh, since last year, uh, I believe last year we were looking at the cost of layer two. It is much higher than this one you are seeing. Uh, there were actually a lot of uh, technical uh, technical advancement uh, that different teams and researchers have made uh, to optimize the data, the, especially the transaction data are put on the chain, and they uh, have uh, optimized the uh, the signatures, they have optimized the, the compressions and all stuff. And, and, and the current it is already optimization, and, uh, and I think the, the researchers that haven't given up yet, and there are still some active researchers going on uh, to further optimize that data uh, submission process. And uh, a team, a, a METIS. Uh, so we actually have teams working on a alternative solution to try to solve that data availability problems in a cheaper way. So we're actually looking at uh, uh, utilizing a similar technology like IPFS. Uh, the reason why we look at IPFS was uh, that when we look at the, the nature of OR, optimistic rollout, and the, the data access pattern is actually has a, a recency bias. Uh, recency, I'm oh, sorry, recency pattern. What I mean by recency pattern is the, the most recent transactions actually most demanded by the verifiers. They, they want to look at the latest and, and freshest transactions to verify. And that actually plays along very well with the idea of this pinning mechanism. So, so with those technologies uh, liking the similar access pattern, so that's why we are actively looking at the uh, utilizing IPFS as an alternative data storage or data availability, uh, availability providers for uh, transaction data. Um, so it is actually going on right now at this. And so once it's complete, we expect a significant reduction of the transaction cost. Uh, I can't wait to share more details in the future, uh, but um, uh, I'm very confident that that's going to happen. Uh, and the third point I want to make is a lot of people are already starting to speculate uh, whether all those layer two solutions will actually drive the Ethereum price up instead of going down. Uh, because uh, we expect there'll be more transactions happening uh, on layer two, and eventually all the data will be uh, submitted to layer one and uh, and drops the gas price up. So uh, as a, a a professional in this particular field, uh, working on the solutions, I, I, I do want to be very mindful about the, uh, the amount of data we submit to the layer one when we're designing our solutions. Uh, yeah, so for Mutis, we, uh, we have a general purpose uh, EDM in place. I do believe one thing. Uh, so everything we do here uh, consists of some a certain of uh, some degree of uh, trade-offs. Trade-offs for my security performance costs and degree of centralization and composability, like John said. So there, there's there's always a balance we want to aim for. Um, and uh, uh, and this we 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 choose uh, this breadth of application use cases, this general ability, general general the ability to handle general case. Uh, over the other things, specialization stuff. Uh, but I believe all the different specialized chains, they all have great and fantastic technologies, actually. Uh, I, I believe they, they can uh, not only survive, I think they will excel in those specialization areas. And there are definitely needs in the market. And this whole thing, honestly, this is a vast blue ocean. And, and there are, I, I believe there are enough opportunities for everyone to, to survive and, and, and thrive there. So that would be my point. The gas price for general purpose uh, uh, layer two solutions. Um, and I I think that's a very good question. I, I believe a lot of people are saying, hey, if you have a layer two solution, will that happen? Uh, will will the gas price for layer two solution be the same as the mainnet, where you can see a constant increase based on the the demands of the system? Uh, I, I will say it is definitely something that we absolutely consider when we design the system. Uh, at least in Metis, 
uh, we have the uh, the sharding uh, already planned in the design, and that's part of the uh, the architecture of it. Uh, so when the uh, when the, uh, the the chain becomes busy, the sharding kicks in, and uh, we'll keep the gas price low. But it is something that we definitely consider very heavily. So my answer would depend on the definition of uh, alternate adoption. I, I, as you can already hear, uh, I think uh, Louis and Louis said they have different answers because the different different definition of alternate adoption. Uh, I'm gonna throw something controversial uh, to to me. I really believe the overall blockchain adoption is still pretty low compared to uh, what is happening out there in the, the other side of the world. Um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is a huge blue ocean and there, there's still many opportunities for everyone to take on. Uh, I hope one takeaway that this audience has um, is the awareness the technology is almost there. I, I tell you, the technology is almost there. Um, and we're ready to dramatically expand the use cases for blockchain. We just need the uh, the applications. Uh, we really think, I, I really think we are at the inflection point where we can see uh, we can witness a, a explosion of uh, blockchain uh, based application. A layer two is uh, definitely one of the major catalysts uh, for this golden era of blockchain. Uh, you can see a lot of uh, the delays from uh, optimism, from arbitrum, um, because this technology is indeed very complicated. Uh, there are many moving parts uh, in the system. I do want to board the audience uh, of the, the complications and challenges we, we, we're overcoming and we're still facing, uh, but it, it is definitely a, a fascinating technology um, and uh, I absolutely believe the future. And I think similar to Luis, I, I think the adoption is there. I think we're already adopting it. It just needs uh, a very good application to um, to let people uh, uh, to this technology and get the general public to adopt blockchain as a, a, a mainstream technology and very confident about it. Uh, I, I will start saying, uh, you may sound familiar, uh, that the answer depends on your definition of consensus. Um, so <laughs> so uh, in my opinion, um, uh, all layer two solutions, no matter what the underlying technology, uh, they have consensus mechanism. It's just not the traditional way of consensus. Um, uh, using options rollup as example, the uh, the data, access, uh, data consensus, what I mean by data consensus is that they actually uh, submit all those data and that consensus is happening on layer one. So that's happening all the time, every time it all happens. But the execution consensus is not happening. On the, uh, it's not happening all the time. It's on demand by the challengers. But what I mean by execution consensus is if you're given a initial state, you have a bunch of uh, transactions, a batch of transactions, and whether the end state is actually the result of the execution of that batch of transactions, that's the execution consensus. That's not happening on layer one all the time. Uh, but that's optimistically deferred to the top challengers on the pay-per-view uh, basis. Uh, so, so on, on that note, um, I have a similar opinion uh, that I do think, from a security point of view, it's not the end of the world to have one operator operating the node because the consensus is actually uh, inherited from the layer one. I mean that. Um, but uh, uh, I mean, we, we do at Nitis we do value decentralization. Uh, to guarantee the business continue, continue uh, I think that's probably the bigger problem. Um, uh, as I mentioned, um, um, when we design the technologies, there are always trade-offs, uh, and, and we, we're constantly making trade-offs all the time, actually. And I, I, I absolutely understood why um, all the layer two solutions are, are designing, uh, making certain uh, design decisions, uh, especially in the short term. Um, so our goal, uh, I mean, is, is to allow anyone to operate a node and participate into this. Uh, uh, Meetings uh, multi chain ecosystem. So, as of yesterday, we have uh, actually enabled the peer nodes uh, in our network. And uh, that's a, a, a important step towards that mission. I'm very happy about it. And we made it uh, yesterday. And so, uh, really looking forward to talk more about it uh, in, the, in the coming uh, weeks. Uh, at the same time, we also have teams working on a, a specific uh, validation system called Rangers. Uh, that is, again, not the traditional consensus uh, that we usually talk about, the block consensus. It's more of a transaction consensus. Uh, focus on the execution uh, consensus. Uh, we actually, in that system employs a, a set of randomly selected uh, uh, participants who validate transactions and stages all the time and get incentives along it. And interestingly, um, it is actually quite a similar mechanism that Vitalik uh, talked about on the first day of the conference. Purely co a coincidence, by the way. So, so that 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 was uh, quite fascinating when I was uh, uh, watching that particular talk. Uh, um, but then again, again uh, every system that we put in, any additional system, uh, there are trade-offs. For example, the uh, um, the validation system we just talked about, the rangers, uh, it will actually drive the uh, the transaction cost up uh, by nature because we're going to give incentives to the validators. Of course, it's going to come somewhere. 
Um, but then this cost will be uh, hopefully offset, offset uh, by the, uh, the use of IPFS, which I mentioned in the first question. Uh, that should uh, dramatically reduce the transition cost. So I still see here, I'm constantly making these uh, decisions to, uh, to of different trade-offs and hopefully we can strike a perfect balance and that's our goal.